a welcome class to lesson one about earthquakes. We are going to define an earthquake. We also look at causes of earthquakes, types of earthquakes, the structure of an earthquake. Then we look at measurement of earthquakes. So right now, what is an earthquake? An earthquake refers the sudden vibration or shaking of the earth's surface due to abrupt release of energy from crustal rocks. We all believe that under the ground we have crustal rocks and when these crustal rocks are subjected to great heat and pressure, they develop stress. This great heat and pressure may come from hot spot or from molten materials called magma and when these rocks develop stress in a process of releasing this stress earthquakes occur the study of earthquakes is called seismology seismology is a branch of geology that deals with the study of earthquakes. Then people who studied earthquakes are called seismologists. Now what are the causes of earthquakes? Why do you think our earth surface together with its crustal rocks sometimes vibrate or shake? We have volcanic eruptions. When volcanic eruptions are taking place, there is rock displacement. And when re rock displacement takes place, earthquakes occur. Then we have faulting. The fracturing of crustal rocks goes hand in hand with displacement of rocks along the fault lines. And this also results into earthquakes. We have isostatic adjustments. Isostase is a state of equilibrium within the parts of the crust. The crust contains both heavy and light rocks. Most of the times heavy rocks always try to sink and light rocks always try to rise. So this sinking and rising of two rocks of different characteristics, heavy and light, causes rock displacement also. And when there is rock displacement, earthquakes occur. Next day, we have plate tectonism. This is the movement of plates along their plate boundaries. Some plates move towards each other and collide. When they collide, definitely vibrations will occur. Some plates move away from each other from the divergent zone. And when they separate, earthquakes also occur at a point of separation, divergent zone. And when they collide at the convergent zone, earthquakes also occur. Some collide and when they collide, one moves downward, especially the, the oceanic crust, I mean the oceanic plate, which is heavier than the continental plate. So as the continental plate is moving above the oceanic plate, earthquakes occur. Uh, next, we have other causes which look not to be more geographical, but they may cause earthquakes on small scale. Movement of heavy vehicles or trains on Earth's surface, these heavy trucks, trains, 
we have testing of nuclear weapons. We have man's activities, for example, mining using explosives. We have mass wasting and landslides can also shake the earth's surface, but on small scale. These ones from heavy vehicles up to the last point of mass wasting or landslides, they are cheaper causes. But from volcanic eruptions to tectonic movements, those ones are more geographical and strong points. We have types of earthquakes. Type C of earthquakes. Uh, for us to understand quickly, the types will depend on causes. For example, we have already looked at causes. So when we talk of the type like volcanic earthquakes, these ones are caused by volcanic eruptions. Tectonic earthquakes, these are caused by movement of tectonic plates. Then we have isostatic earthquakes. These ones are caused by isostasy. Then we have plutonic earthquakes. These are deep, ranging from 240 to 670 kilometers deep. We call them plutonic because of their depth. They are very deep. They affect the deeper layers. The structure of an earthquake. How does an earthquake look like? Not by color, but maybe by appearance, if we are to illustrate it. In other words, we want to look at parts which make up an earthquake. And there are two major points that make up a mature earthquake. Uh, one, we have focus. Focus. One can call it hypocenter. This is a point on the this is the point in the earth's crust, in the earth's crust, where an earthquake originates or starts from. It is a point under the ground. It is not exposed on earth's surface. That's why we say in the earth's crust, not on earth's surface, where an earthquake originates. And we also have epicenter. This is a point on the Earth's surface where surface waves start from. The difference between focus and epicenter, focus is under the ground. Then epicenter is on Earth's surface. And another difference is that it is from focus where body waves originate and it is from epicenter where surface waves originate. In summary, we have two types of waves, two major types of waves of an earthquake. We have body waves and surface waves. What are body waves? These are waves which originate from the focus and they affect the earth's crust. They don't affect the earth's surface. They affect the, the underground. They are internal. The internal rocks shake because of body waves. And the external rocks shake because of surface waves. Body waves originate from focus. Surface waves originate from epicenter. Uh, this is a diagram trying to illustrate what we have been explaining. Uh, definitely, this is the, the ground level. And below this level, this is underground. These are the layers of the earth. And within the layers under the ground, 
we have this point which we have called what focus and from focus we have these waves these waves which we have called body waves because we said they originate from focus when they reach the earth's surface here above the ground there is another point there is another point which we called epicenter so it is at this epicenter where surface waves begin from and they are distributed in the parts of the earth's surface you see these waves are moving this side and these waves are moving this side on earth's surface to cause the shaking of the rocks of the earth's surface but these body waves within the crust cause the shaking of the rocks under the ground so this point is epicenter and this point under the ground is the focus An instrument used to measure the intensity of an earthquake is called seismograph or seismometer. Seismograph is just a graph where the measurements are recorded, but an instrument is called what? Seismometer. Seismometer. Using a Richter scale. The instrument is seismometer, it records on a seismograph and using a scale called Richter scale. And it is measured in units called magnitude. Magnitude, that's the units in which we measure the earthquake. And what is the logic between or behind what is the logic behind the magnitude of an earthquake if the magnitude is below 7 we say this earthquake is weak and when the magnitude is above 7 if the magnitude of the earthquake is above 7, we say this earthquake is strong. So, earthquakes whose magnitude is 7 and above, these ones are very destructive. And earthquakes whose magnitude is less than 7, these earthquakes are weak, they are less destructive. Uh, we also need to know the difference between tsunami and El Nino. It's a common question asked. What is El Nino? How is it different from tsunami? Tsunami refers to strong oceanic waves caused by the earthquakes. Then El Nino is a prolonged season of strong rains and winds. Tsunami refers to strong oceanic waves caused by earthquakes. Then, El Nino is a prolonged season of strong rains and winds. Thank you.